Dear all, hope you all are doing good. Due to COVID-19 situation we are moving to our classes through virtual. Since it is a virtual session, we will begin with small chapter. Electromagnetic conduction. We have divided the chapter into six sets. Set 1. Introduction and experiments of Faraday and Henry. Set 2. Magnetic flux and Faraday's law of induction. Lenz's law and conservation of energy. Set 3. Motional electromotive force. Energy consideration. A quantitative study. Set 4. Eddy current. Self-inductance. Set 5. Mutual inductance. Set 6. AC generator. Each lecturer will handle these different sets. You can ask your doubts through class representative. Lectures will address your questions before next session. We will not take the same chapter again. You should submit your assignments once college reopen. Marks will be allotted for the same. Requesting you to kindly prepare your own lecture notes during the class. We will be sending soft copy of NCERT physics textbook to you all. Happy learning! Hi all! Good day! Today we are going to discuss about electromagnetism. Electricity and magnetism are interrelated, and are also interconvertible. Let us look at few examples. When an electric current is passing through a conductor, it produces a magnetic field, which can be observed through the deflection of a magnetic compass needle, placed near the conductor. This proves that, moving electric charges produces magnetic field. Electric motors work on this principle. When it was shown that, electrical currents create magnetic field, the obvious question that arose is, can magnetic fields produce current? That means, can I use a magnetic field, to generate current? Lot of experiments were carried out by many scientists, by placing very strong magnetic fields around conductors. But they did not find much successful results in generating currents, until Michael Faraday in 1831 did a series of extraordinary experiments to show that, to generate current I need changing magnetic field. Something should change and that change will result in an electrical current. Michael Faraday was a very famous British scientist, and he has contributed significantly to electromagnetics. In his experiments, he observed that, an electric current is induced in a closed coil when subjected to a changing magnetic field. The phenomenon in which an electric current is generated by varying magnetic fields is called electromagnetic induction. Electric generators work on this principle. We will now discuss and learn about three experiments by Faraday and Henry related to electromagnetism. Michael Faraday was an English scientist who contributed to the study of electromagnetism and electrochemistry. His main discoveries include the principles underlying electromagnetic induction, diamagnetism and electrolysis. Joseph Henry, American experimental physicist, professor at Princeton University and first director of the Smithsonian Institutions. He made important improvements in electromagnets by winding coils of insulated wire around iron pole pieces and invented an electromagnetic motor and a new efficient telegraph. He discovered self-induction and investigated, how current in one circuit induce current in another. The discovery and understanding of electromagnetic induction are based on a long series of experiments carried out by Faraday and Henry. 
We shall now discuss some of these experiments. Experiment 1. Current induced by a magnet. Figure shows a coil C1 connected to a galvanometer G. When the north pole of bar magnet is pushed towards the coil C1, the pointer in the galvanometer deflects, indicating the presence of electric current in the coil. The deflection lasts as long as the bar magnet is in motion. The galvanometer does not show any deflection when the magnet is held stationary. When the magnet is pulled away from the coil, the galvanometer shows deflection in the opposite direction, which indicates reversal of the current's direction. Moreover, when the south pole of bar magnet is moved towards or away from coil, the deflection in the galvanometer are opposite to that observed, with the north pole, for similar movements. Further, the deflection and hence current is found to be larger, when the magnet is pushed or pulled away from the coil faster. Instead, when the bar magnet is held fixed and coil C1 is moved towards or away from the magnet, the same effects are observed. This experiment concludes that, it is the relative motion, between the magnet and the coil, that is responsible for generation of electric current in the coil. Now we will move to experiment 2. Current induced by current. Here, the bar magnet is replaced by a second coil C2 connected to a battery. The steady current in the coil C2 produces a steady magnetic field. When coil C2 is moved towards the coil C1, the galvanometer shows a deflection. This indicates that electric current is induced in the coil C1. When C2 is moved away, the galvanometer shows a deflection in the opposite direction. This indicates that, direction of current induced in the coil C1 is reversed. The deflection lasts as long as coil C2 is in motion. When the coil C2 is held fixed and C1 is moved, the same effects are observed. This experiment concludes that, it is the relative motion between the coils that induces the electric current. Now, we will discuss about experiment 3. Current induced by changing current. The previous two experiments involved relative motion between a magnet and a coil and between two coils respectively. Through another experiment, Faraday showed that this relative motion is not an absolute requirement. In the figure you can see two coils C1 and C2 held stationary. Coil C1 is connected to galvanometer G, while the second coil C2 is connected to a battery through a tapping key K. It is observed that, the galvanometer shows a momentary deflection, when the tapping key K, is, pressed. The pointer in the galvanometer returns to zero immediately. If the key is kept pressed continuously, there is no deflection in the galvanometer. Key pressed means circuit is closed and current is passing through the coil C2. Key released means circuit is open and there is no current through the coil C2. When the key is released, a momentary deflection is observed again, but in the opposite direction. It is also observed that the deflection increases dramatically, when an iron rod is inserted into the coils along their axis, and the key is pressed or released. This experiment concludes that the relative motion is not an absolute requirement. Current can be induced even without relative motion. Let us conclude these experiments. Experiment 1. The relative motion between a coil and a bar magnet produced induced current. Experiment 2. Relative motion between one coil and another coil carrying current produced induced current.
Experiment 3. Relative motion is not an absolute requirement. Current can be induced even without relative motion. Dear students this is the assignment question from this topic. You can refer below YouTube link for more details about this topic. Have a good day.